Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Math Solutions. This time we're looking at the solution to maximizing the area of an ellipse. This came off my main channel video about the perimeter of an ellipse and how there's no nice, neat, finite equation that will give you the perimeter of an ellipse, but we'll deal with that in a second. First of all, we're going to have the solution for if you have a 28 centimeter piece of string attached to two pins, how far apart should those pins be to maximize the total amount of area within that ellipse? Before I get to the answer, I want to define some terms because we're going to be referring to values of A, B, and C quite a bit during this video. And uh, James, once again, did a video explaining what's going on. And I've just taken some images from their video. Why not? So here we have uh, B is the minor axis, or technically the semi-minor. I didn't really make this clear in my main video, but I should be saying semi each time because technically the whole axis is the full diameter, whereas we're just using the radius equivalent. So anyway, the B is the uh, minor, semi-minor axis. A is the major axis, it's the big one. And then C is half how far out the focal point is. And so when you see A, B, and C during this uh, video of all the um, fantastic explanations and mathematics people have sent in, that's what they're referring to. Okay, and the correct answer for how far apart should the focal points be, because that's where the pins go. So basically, what should be the value of 2c in this specific example if you've got 28 centimeters of string is zero. Yep, a lot of people worked out it was zero and then got very confused because they thought it should be more complicated than that. Or maybe they've made a mistake. Nope, it's zero. It doesn't matter how long the string is. The fact that I made a big thing out of measuring the string to show it's 28 centimeters, that's not necessary. Um, the fact that I specified the units had to be centimeters, also not necessary. Zero. Any length string, any units you fancy, right on top of each other. A circle for any length of the string will give you the maximum area. And people were like, this is too easy. And you know what? The, um, the results kind of speak for that. So we had 1,592 correct submissions on the form on the website. Uh, that is out of a total of 1,697. So that is a very high percentage. That's 94% correct. And I like to have a variety of difficulty levels in terms of the submittable answer. And that's partly to keep you on your toes so you never know how involved it's going to be. It's also so everyone gives it a go because you never know, maybe it's achievable. And often I like it to be, like I like the fact that a lot of the puzzles, if you're into programming, you can really explore them, but I don't want that to be compulsory, at least not all the time. Often I want there to be ways to solve it that anyone could do. And in this case, this is not a video someone sent in, this is a channel called um, Tech Square that I found just when I was searching on YouTube. And I was gonna recreate this experiment, but they did it really well. So I'm just gonna play their video. This is showing if you've got a, a set piece of string and you start drawing different ellipses. If you did just get some string and give this a go and you try some different ones, I'm gonna skip, kind of fast forward through their video. If you move them and draw another one, you can see it still hits the same points on either side. And then if you add another one in, it still goes, because of the length of the string, it still hits those same points. And so what I liked about this puzzle is you could just get some string, get some pins, experiment. Very quickly, you'd see this, which, oh, by the way, I'm just, you're seeing whatever I'm seeing on my screen there. Um, you'd get this, and then you're like, well, it's zero. And it's obvious just from playing with a physical thing, which I really liked. And so that's kind of why I went with this puzzle, even though arguably the answer of zero is a little easy. It's still fun. And the funness for me outweighed the potentially um, deceptively easiness. There you are, Tech Square. Check out their channel. I'll put a link um, below. But uh, people did send in a bunch of maths. So um, Matthias, I think, sent in some calculations. First of all, took the uh, general equation for an ellipse, x squared on a squared, y squared on b squared equals one. Or obviously you can change that depending on the size. Um, uh, of your, well, actually, no, you keep it like that. A and B will give you the size. Um, yeah, sorry, ignore that. I got distracted. The area is pi AB. So the area gets bigger if you maximize both A and B. 
However, in this case, you're limited by the length of the string. And in fact, A is fixed based on the length of the string. It doesn't matter where you uh, move the pins, A is not gonna change. And that's why it always hits those points on the side every time. However, B is, in this case, for 28 centimeters of string, the square root of 14 squared minus C squared, which you maximize if C is zero. And so C is zero. They're both in the middle. Good work. Um, this person did uh, a fantastic uh, full-on uh, document with the details. They also had a lot on the, the major open question, which is can you find a formula that better approximates the perimeter of an ellipse? Well, I think better, better than what I did, or just another good one, interesting one, might have its own properties. We got sent in loads of those. In fact, so many that Deanna and Oliver are still going through them. Thank you, everyone who sent those in. In fact, this paper will probably appear again because um, they've put in stuff about their approximation in the same paper. So that will reappear. We're gonna go through those thoroughly. So this is actually gonna be a slightly shorter video because people got distracted, rightfully so, by that. Another reason why I thought a slightly easier one would be fine because the uh, approximating one, way more involved. So uh, good work there. Brian got Deanna's award for neatest handwriting. I didn't know we were handing that award out. Apparently we are. Well done, Brian. You won that award. Uh, this Brian, different Brian, different spelling, different Brian. That's how it works. Um, they did some great working out, loads of diagrams, showed how it works. Not only that, they then did a table for all the possible perimeters that you get as you vary where the two focal points, the pins are, and then they plotted it. Great, great stuff, Brian. And you can see it um, flattens out. Uh, and zero is the maximum area, uh, area, area. I'm still, I'm thinking error still from the perimeter. And that's there you are. So, and that's it. I mean, wish I had more, but there you go. That's that's the whole lot. It's zero. Surprise. But you don't get zero points. So if you get the speed points, you get the um, getting correct answer points, and you get participation points. A uh, surprising number of people. I forget how many. 14. Second most common answer was 14. So I guess people accidentally put in the radius of the circle. I don't know. But if you gave it a go, you get participation points. So don't stress if that's what you did. Oliver has updated the league table on the website, so you can check that out. Thank you all for getting involved. And we will be back soon with the full breakdown. And you know what? If you still want to send in an equation formula for, to approximate the perimeter of an ellipse, go for it. We can't guarantee we will get through all of them because at some point we have to draw a line under it, but we'll keep accepting submissions for as long as we can. So you can keep working on that, send it in. Sorry, at some point we'll stop taking in new ones, but you know, give it a go. And so uh, that's it for this time. Thank you for joining in in Matt Parker's Maths Puzzles. <laughs>